In this video, we will be taking a look at what a business plan actually is, what a business plan is really for, and what goes into a comprehensive business plan. This is by far one of the most important parts of operating any successful business. Ask all of those entrepreneurs who have achieved their dreams, and they will tell you that creating and constantly tweaking their business plan is one of the keys to their success. So, I want you to imagine you are going to throw a party. To ensure the party goes well, you want to make a plan. Make sure you have invited everybody, you had the correct number of cups, the right amount of cake, and many other important party necessities. Having a well thought through plan should mean that your party has a greater chance of being a huge success. If you had not made this plan, your party is more likely to be a failure. And the same is true in business. Without a plan, both new and existing businesses are much more likely to fail. So, what is a business plan? Well, a business plan is a document that details all the important parts of running any successful business. It will detail the business idea, what it is and why it's going to work. It will state what they hope to achieve and any specific objectives they must complete to get there. Then it will look at the target market and detail who they are actually intending to sell to. It will contain financial predictions on their potential success. Finally, it will be extremely important to discuss the market research that has been completed and how they hope to persuade potential customers to buy from them. An old business saying states, failing to plan equals planning to fail. Like most things in life, if you don't have a plan, you are simply less likely to succeed. Now, you might be thinking, when should I make my business plan? The truth is, a business plan must always be created before you begin, before you set out on your venture, before you decide to take the risks involved in starting your own business, you must have a plan. You need to sit down and think of everything involved, every obstacle you might encounter and every clever idea you have had. Like most things, this process will be easier if you write it down and in this video we will explore how to organise all of these important plans into one easy to understand document. So, a business plan must be created at the very beginning. But every truly successful business will update or create a brand new plan any time there is a big change. If they want to launch a new product, they will make a new business plan. If they want to set up in a new country, they will make a new business plan. And if their customers can't leave their homes because of, say, a global pandemic, they will make a new business plan. You should revisit your plan time and time again if you really hope to be successful. Now that we know what a business plan is, let's meet this video's main example. This is Finley Thomas, and he has decided to open up a small local shop, a news agent. You know, one of those great little shops that has everything you need without going all the way to the supermarket. Finley was bored of walking over 20 minutes to the nearest shop every time he ran out of milk. He figured he couldn't be the only one. Surely his neighbours have the same problem. He believed that he had spotted a gap in the market, and that if he was to open a shop at the end of his street, there would be plenty of potential customers up for grabs. To all the teachers out there, show all of these videos without any ads and gain access to our growing library of over 500 teaching worksheets. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more? A newly opened local school, which was based only two streets away from Finley Street, also seemed to be a fantastic opportunity to gain even more customers. He was sure there would be parents and students passing the shop on a daily basis and hopefully heading through the shop door. Finley is confident, he is determined to succeed, he's pretty creative and he's not afraid to take a risk. He has all of those key characteristics that make for a great entrepreneur. The one thing Finley doesn't have is very much cash. He's going to need to get a rather large sum of money to get the shop off the ground. He will need to pay rent, purchase equipment such as refrigerators and shelving, buy stock to fill up these shelves and the list goes on. 
He is willing to put his entire life savings into the business. But the reality is that for Finley, his life savings only add up to £10,000, which is unlikely to be enough for everything he needs. He is going to try to secure a small business loan from the bank. Finley plans to make an appointment to discuss this very soon, but he knows the bank will expect a thorough business plan. He's a little worried about how to put it all together. What should he put in it? What is the bank expecting to see? Well, when creating a business plan, there are a number of different items that must be included. The order of these items within the plan may vary depending on the particular business. More established businesses may even have more sections, but it's all pretty much the same thing. Every business plan should include the business idea, the people involved in the business, the aims and objectives of the business, the market research that's being completed, the finance section, and finally the business location. To help us have a better understanding of each of these integral elements of the business plan, we will now look at each one individually and examine what Finley is likely to add to this section. So, the very first thing that people are expecting to see in a business plan is, of course, the business idea. Every business needs a clear idea. This is fundamentally what the business is, what it sells and why it will work. Has the business invented something completely new or is the business just hoping to innovate an existing product or service and make improvements? In the case of Finley and his shop, he is clearly not inventing anything new. People have been buying and selling goods from little shops in their communities for centuries. But anybody reading the plan will still want to know everything about his shop. Exactly what does he plan to sell? Is there anything that makes his shop better than another? If you were launching a business that is bringing a completely new product to the market, then you're going to need to spend a little more time on this section. Make sure anybody reading really grasps your product or service. Without them fully understanding your business idea, the rest of your plan won't do much good. The next section of the business plan that we will take a look at is the people running the business. Those involved in an enterprise are one of the key elements to its success. Anybody reading through your business plan will want to know what you are bringing to the table, the skills that you have which will help you succeed. Importantly though, they will also want to know who else is involved. Do you already have any employees? Are they qualified? What will they bring to the business? Finley will need to describe in this section of his plan why he will be successful in running the shop. It should detail the relevant qualifications and experience that Finley has which will support him and his business operation. Finley will also be using his father's help as he has many years of experience in the finance industry and he is able to support him to thoroughly understand his finances. The more people and skills that Finley can bring to his small business, the more successful it is likely to become. Now, Finley will also need to create a section of his plan which clearly details the aims and objectives of the business. We will look in depth in other videos at exactly what business aims and objectives are, the key differences between them and how they may often change over time. For now, you just need to know that this is what Finley is aiming to achieve with his shop. For most businesses starting out, their main business aim is to survive. This is because, as we have discussed before, over 60% of new businesses will sadly fail. So before you work on anything else, you have to keep going for that first year. Once your business has achieved this, it's time to come up with a new aim and the objectives you will need to complete to achieve this. Bring this video and over a hundred more to life with fun, interactive games, quizzes and case studies. Why not try the first 25 completely free by visiting bizwizard.co.uk. By far, one of the most important sections of your business plan is market research. Whenever you are trying to accomplish anything in life, you need to look at every aspect. Pick in a university, do your research, choosing a holiday destination, do your research, and the same is true in business. If you are going to set up a new enterprise, you will need to check that it's going to work. 
people are going to actually buy from you and they are willing to pay the price you are thinking of charging. This section is particularly important for Finley as he plans on applying for a small business loan. He will need to identify ways to find out information from the local residents. Ask them if they agree that opening a shop in this particular location is really a good idea. Will they actually use the shop? Or are they loyal to the shop that they have always used? He can find this out with questionnaires, interviews, or even a focus group. We will take a look at each of these in other videos. But he doesn't just need to research whether people will use the shop. He needs to find out what they want to buy and even when they want to buy it. Then he needs to find out how best to advertise his shop to his target market, those people who will most likely use it. Never underestimate the importance of this process. Some of the biggest business fails of all time have simply come down to the business not doing enough research. In the next section of the plan, this will detail the finances. This section is all about the money. How much money can you take from your customers? How much of this money will be profit? How long will it take you to make a profit? And many other things like this. They will definitely want to know where you are getting the money to start your business. This is usually referred to as sources of finance. As Finley is investing over £10,000 of his own money and he is hoping to raise a further £10,000 to get the business started, he is going to have to really take his time with this section if he hopes to impress the bank. Within this finance section of your business plan, you could include many different things, like a break-even analysis, a cash flow forecast, a profit and loss statement. All of these different concepts are covered in other videos, so I won't go through them now. The fact is, particularly if you are like Finley, just launching your business and trying to raise money, this section may be one of the most important. Each of the video courses over at bizwizard.co.uk also includes an interactive business case study that applies the knowledge learned to a real world scenario. There are over 1,000 multiple choice questions, each with detailed feedback, which tests students' understanding of the content. Why not visit bizwizard.co.uk to find out more? The final section that we will look at is the business location. Anybody reading your plan will want to know exactly where you are going to operate from. What goes into this section will really depend on the business. With a retailer like Finley, who is selling goods to customers in a physical location, they might want to know about the footfall, meaning how many people might walk into the shop. They may want to know who are the competitors, how many other small shops are in the area, if you were manufacturing products in a factory, you might detail statistics on how many potential workers that need a job are in this area. Are you going to be able to get enough staff to successfully operate here? So, there you have it. As I have mentioned, one textbook might list these sections in a different order, or maybe name them in a slightly different way. The level of detail you need to put into your plan will depend on what you are trying to achieve, but always remember you must complete one. It's really not an option if you ever hope to be successful as an entrepreneur. Remember, no business plan is ever really going to be the same as another business plan. Businesses are unique. Even if they sell the same product, they have different people. They are based in a different place and their plan just simply won't be the same. But one thing is always going to be certain. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. This has been the Biz Wizard. See you in the next